Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Incognito Islamic Productions. I'm your brother Akhil, and today we want to look at the meaning of Ibn Umar's statement much of the Quran is gone. One subject of Islam that is constantly under attack from its critics is the preservation of the Quran. Muslims are proud to state that the Quran is completely intact, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised to protect it from any changes. There have been many failed attempts by skeptics to prove that the Quran is not in its original form. They often jump at any opportunity to prove this point because it is essential to their argumentation to refute the most important aspect of Islam, its miraculous noble book. One such claim that has appeared has to do with the statement of Ibn Umar, one of the companions who was very knowledgeable about the Quran. It was misconstrued by some to mean that much of the Quran is lost, but this is not what it means at all. This video will explain this mistranslation of Ibn Umar's statement and provide a reason why this statement does not mean what the critics of Islam want to make it appear to me. The critics of Islam take much of their inspiration from Orientalists of the past, some sincere but mistaken, while others had destructive agendas. Some of these missionaries have lacked the desire and sincerity to look at Islam from a neutral point of view. In an attempt to delegitimize Islam, they have often dealt with translations since they cannot understand the source language, which are often inaccurate and do not encompass the full meaning of the original text in Arabic. Despite their claim that the Quran has not been perfectly preserved, we will show beyond the shadow of a doubt that Allah's promise to protect the Quran is indeed true. In the Quran it states that verily we have revealed the reminder of the Quran and verily we assuredly guard it from corruption. A narration from Abdullah ibn Umar quoted by Hafid al-Suyuti rahimahullah in his Al-Itqan fi Ulum al-Quran has been a source of joy for some of these skeptics. One critic of Islam translates his narration as the following. Abdullah ibn Umar reportedly said, Let none of you say, I have got the whole of the Quran. How does he know what all of it is? Much of the Quran is gone. Let him say instead, I have got what has survived. As Suyuti and his tafsir al Jalalain, al Itqan fi Ulum al Quran. Not only are the meanings that these critics try to superimpose on this narration totally wrong, but the translation is also misleading. We should first clarify the real meaning of this narration and then give its rightful translation supported with due reasoning. The true meaning of the narration To every ardent student of the Quran sciences, it is known that there were many verses first revealed as part of the Quran and later abrogated. Asayuti brings his narration in a section of his work titled as section 47 about the abrogating and the abrogated. Likewise, it is in a section about abrogation in another work of Asayuti in his work titled Mutarak al arqan fi Ijaz al-Quran. In Abu Ubaid's work, from which Asiyuti quotes, it is the first narration in the chapter titled about what all was abrogated from the Quran after revelation and is not put in the Musahif. Most important is a narration quoted by Ibn Hajar, which complements and fixes the meaning of the report we are discussing. Ibn Hajar, he writes, Ibn Ad-Durais has narrated a report of Ibn Umar that he used to dislike the person who said, I have recited the whole of the Qur'an. He, Ibn Umar, used to say, but the reality is, a part of the Qur'an has been abrogated. Al-Asqalani ibn Hajar al-Fatubari. This report confirms that Ibn Umar's statement simply refers to what was abrogated from the Qur'an. Abu Bakr ibn Tayyib al-Baqalani, in his amazing work, Intisar al-Qur'an, he quotes another narration on the similar lines 
and then explains the two together. He writes, and similar is the report of Abdullah ibn Abbas from Ubay, that he heard a man said to him, O Abul Munvar, verily I have gathered, memorized the whole of the Quran. And he, Ubay, said to him, he does not know what the whole of it was because so much of the Quran was abrogated and it was not found afterwards. Al-Baqalani al-Intisar al-Quran. And then explaining it, he writes, And it is not possible for anyone to claim that he has learned all what was revealed as Quran, the abrogating part of it and the abrogated. And their words, it was not found afterwards, underscore that we did not find in our day one who has memorized all that was abrogated and those recitations was given up. And this is something which was bound to happen. Nothing has been lost of what the Prophet ﷺ left of the Qur'an. Nabi Abdul Aziz bin Rufa'i, Shaddad ibn Mu'aqil, and I entered upon Ibn Abbas. Shaddad bin Mu'aqil asked him, Did the Prophet leave anything besides the Qur'an? He replied, He did not leave anything except what is between the two bindings of the Qur'an. Then we visited Muhammad ibn Hanafiya and asked him the same question. And he replied, The Prophet did not leave except what is between the bindings of the Qur'an. This hadith is categorical evidence that nothing was lost of the Qur'an because all that the blessed Prophet left for his people is what was put between the two bindings. Ibn Hajar, he writes, and this chapter is made to refute those who assume that a lot from the Qur'an was lost to the death of those who knew it. Al-Aini also makes exactly the same point. Shahabuddin al alusi comments help explain this further. Verily they, the people of Sunnah, have agreed on there being no loss in the Qur'an as is continuously reported like we today find between the two bindings. Yes, during the time of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, the part which was not reported continuously and was rather abrogated was dropped out from the official Mus'haf. And to this relates that which is reported by Abu Ubaid from Ibn Umar, who said, None of you should say that he has taken the whole of the Qur'an. How could he know what all of it was? A lot of the Qur'an has passed him by. Let him say instead, I have taken of the Qur'an that which became apparent. The above mentioned narration of Sayyid Bukhari is very significant. One of the two who said the Prophet ﷺ left nothing except what is between the two bindings was Ibn Abbas. And in the narration quoted by Al-Baqalani, we find him reporting and listening to the comment of his teacher Ubay ibn Ka'ab which is the same as that of Ibn Umar. Connecting the dots, we make out that he understood Ubay did not mean to say that some part of the Qur'an that the Prophet ﷺ had left for the Ummah might have been missed and could not be found anymore by the person claiming to have memorized the whole of it. Rather, it shows that Ibn Abbas fully knew that what Ubay referred to was something exclusive to what the Prophet ﷺ had left for the Ummah as eternal guidance. And we have already seen that the narration of Ibn Ummah quoted by Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani on authority of Abu Durais makes the same point very plainly. Another significant observation about Bukhari's narration is that the two who testified for the Quranic pres preservation are Ibn Abbas and the cousin of Ali ibn Abi Talib and Muhammad ibn al Hanafiya, the son of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Their testimony is quite sufficient to lay to rest any arguments by some extreme Shiites who say the Quran was tampered with to remove verses in favor of Ali. Had this been the case, these two close relatives of Ali would have not failed to make a mention of it. Two objections answered and clarified. Having explained the narration, let us now turn to two possible questions. 
Why did Ibn Umar refer to the abrogated verses as the Qur'an? Before finding the answer to this question, let us have another look at the narration of Ibn Durais. Ibn Umar used to dislike the person who said, I have recited the whole of the Qur'an. He, Ibn Umar, used to say, but the reality is, a part of the Qur'an has been abrogated. Very much like our explanation to the narration we are discussing, this report shows that Ibn Umar referred to the abrogated verses as the Qur'an. With the clarity in its last words, this narration takes away all the rhetoric power of the question and reduces it to a mere query having no ability whatsoever to cast doubts on the validity of the explanation offered. Dr. Sa'ad ibn Abdullah al-Humayyid comments on his narration in his research of Sunan Sa'id ibn Mansur. And it appears from the words of Ibn Umar that in his opinion even the abrogated verses could also be called Qur'an after they are being abrogated. Or they could be so called by the way they once were. This is understandable given the fact that the Quran is nothing but the words of Allah and abrogated verses, although they are not required to be followed, were nevertheless revealed due to their divine origin. In this regard, there is one important difference between Ibn Umar and the people of later generations like us, as there is no authority of continuous mutawatir reports we cannot be as certain as him about some abrogated words once being a part of the Qur'an. We may, however, refer to them as such for academic purposes on the basis of lesser proofs. However, for Ibn Umar, this was not the condition as he must have listened to some verses from the Prophet wasallam in person for which he later learned that they were abrogated. Therefore, he was particular about the words that emanated from the Almighty as part of the Qur'an, though abrogated afterwards. Furthermore, it also has an indication of an attitude of extreme care on such matters that involve goodness on one part, because this can in a way lead to self-glorification. One might see it akin to the following hadith. Narrated Abu Bakr, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, One of you should not say, I fasted the whole of Ramadan, and I prayed during the night in the whole of Ramadan. I do not know whether he disliked the self-praise, or he, the narrator said, he must have slept a little and taken rest. We can see that even though it is natural that one who would fast as such for the whole month of Ramadan will break the fast at night, and will also sleep besides standing in late night prayers. Yet, an out of the way step is taken in instructing not to make such a claim. The fact that the narration of Ibn Umar is in essence similar to this and involves the idea of claim as well, it can help us appreciate the real message in the words of Ibn Umar. Was much of the Quran abrogated? We know the actual text involved the words Qur'an, Kathir. Therefore, one may tend to translate it as much of the Qur'an with a stress on much. In fact, one critic asks, what kind of revelation is this that much, not some, of it consists of verses that have been abrogated? This may appear to be a very strong point, but actually speaks of the lack of proper understanding of the Arabic language. The Arabic word kathir does not mean much in the comparative sense. In the comparative sense, it can even be used to mean less than what is compared to as shown below. The same is the case with abrogation that we are discussing. The abrogated part of the Quran was definitely less than what remains. A simple proof for this assertion is a narration in which Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the share of his wealth that he might give away in charity while he feared to die. Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas himself narrated his dialogue with the blessed Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on this subject. I said, should I give two-thirds of my property in charity? He said, no. I asked half. He said, no. 
Then he added one third, and even one third is much. Certainly one third is not much in the comparative sense of being more than the rest. And no person of reason can ever claim that. Ibn Umar only aimed to highlight that the fact that verses of the Quran were abrogated and no one should say that they had memorized the whole of the Quran, including those verses as it rests in the guarded tablets with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Quran that we have between the two covers today, the Quran given to us by the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa collected by Abu Bakr and Uthman, is the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed and decreed to remain as a guiding message for humanity to the day of judgment, without any additions, subtractions, or alterations. To summarize and conclude, Ibn Umar only referred to the abrogated part of the Qur'an in his comment in no way suggests of even a single letter of the Qur'an being lost. Ibn Umar's other narration, quoted by Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani on authority of Ibn Durais, plainly establishes his meaning. Abu Ubaid and Asuyuti have both placed the narration in the section about abrogated verses, which shows that they also understood it likewise. Comments of Baqalani and Al-Lulusi also support the same. The word kafir does not mean much in a comparative sense. The rightful translation of the meaning of this narration is the following. Ibn Umar, he said, none of you should say that he has taken the whole of the Quran. How could he know what all of it was before some of it being abrogated? Substantial parts of the Quran has passed by him due to abrogation. Let him say instead, I have taken of the Quran that which remained and became apparent after abrogation. And indeed, Allah knows best. Please don't forget to like, to share, and subscribe. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.